Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. So firstly before we start, if there are any background noises, I do have my hedgehog here with me. She's very upset with me because I just woke her up from her nap. I don't think she's ever been formally introduced, but this is Heidi. And she's adorable and she's extremely sleepy. So I'm just going to tuck her back in. I don't usually keep her with me for videos, but it is ridiculously cold today. So she's cuddling with me to stay warm. You need a bath, Bubba, look at that. Yo, you need a bath. But anyway, um, so today's video is going to be about 10 things I wish I knew before vet school. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. say that these are just my experiences not everyone finds it the same way obviously but these are definitely things that stood out to me and that I would have liked to know before I got there so everyone has that friend and if you're trying to get into vet school you most likely are that friend where if you get 70 for a test you are so disappointed you are so upset with yourself you feel like you didn't do nearly well enough and you're basically just annoying everyone around you because they got 60 and are so happy that they passed. So I dealt a lot with that when I was in high school and I never thought that, you know, I was so much better and I was so much smarter. The fact of the matter was that you needed to get more than pretty much everyone else to be able to get into vet school. So there was always a lot of pressure on me to do to get 80s and 90s and to get my distinctions and to be the best basically and then when i got to vet school i was actually not too worried about my marks for, for first semester i just sort of felt that these modules don't really have anything to do with vet science you know we had stuff like chemistry and physics and stuff so i wasn't too worried about my marks also university is a lot more difficult so that also contributed to my marks dropping a lot as in from about like 80s 90s to 60s maybe you know sometimes 50s also i failed my first test uh, my very first semester test was chemistry i failed it i was really disappointed because i was also pretty used to studying and doing my part and then doing well i mean i didn't just sit around not do anything for weeks before the test and then I got a 90, but you know, I was used to studying and then getting a good mark, you know, it sort of went hand in hand for me. And then all of a sudden I would study my ass off and I would fail because I actually studied really hard for that test. And it was just like, no, we, we don't care what you did. You're going to fail anyway. I also failed the next chemistry semester test, just by the way. And then when we got our marks back and I asked my friend, you know, how did it go? And she was like, oh no, it went horrible. I got 70. And I was just like, I mean, come on, <laughs> like, firstly, you don't need to get distinctions anymore. So why are you even upset with it not going well? Secondly, it's chemistry. Nobody cares about chemistry. Like, why, why are you even upset by this? And also, 70, you did really well. So it was really weird for me to go from that point of being the friend who got like 80s and being disappointed to being the friend who's disappointed by my friends being disappointed by getting distinctions so it was really weird it was a complete transition for me and i didn't really expect that it would bother me at all but you know a couple of tests in and all my friends you know specifically the friend group that i was in did really well not everyone does well in first year definitely not but my friend group specifically did really well. So I sort of felt very, very stupid with everyone doing really well and being disappointed in it and me scraping by and being so proud of myself. It was really a weird feeling for the first, pretty much first year. After that, I just didn't really care anymore. So the second one is that there is a lot of extra costs in vet school. So I sort of thought that you pay your study fees, you go, you study and you're done. I thought that that was it. But there are actually a lot of extra costs, especially in first year when I bought a lot of textbooks and each textbook was round about the thousand rand mark. So it was pretty expensive to buy all the textbooks and then you also have to buy your clothing, so your lab coats, your greens, your scrubs one day. I don't have scrubs yet, but I'm going to need scrubs one day. Um, the gum boots, all of that. You have to buy that for chemistry. I think we had to buy our little molecule set. I can't remember if they gave it to us or if we had to buy it. 
Um, for anatomy in my second year, we also had to buy our instrument kit. I also had to buy a really expensive textbook for that year. So there are a lot of extra costs for vet school that I really was not aware of. So I feel like that's something that you should be prepared for before you get started. Number three, and that is one that I've dealt with constantly. And that is that you don't feel competent. I don't know. I always sort of, I mean, I picture myself in grade 10 when I was still in school and I was looking at third years being like, wow, they're 21. They've got their entire lives figured out. They know exactly what they're doing. They're so competent in their degrees. They're just breezing through life. You know, they're so grown up. I'm there. I'm third year. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I completely do not feel competent. The other day I burned my pasta. I mean, pasta, how do you even burn pasta? I mean, seriously. So yeah, that is something that I always sort of waited for. I always waited to start feeling like a grown up, like I'm competent, like I know exactly what's going on in this degree. I always looked at the older students and they'd be walking around in their greens and they know everything about campus and they knew all the animals. And I was like, wow, they must know exactly what they're doing. And it might be influenced by the fact that it's, you know, that we're in a pandemic and we don't get to spend a lot of time on campus, but I really do not feel competent. I don't. And it's not in a bad way. It's not to say that you aren't competent or that you don't know what you're doing by the time that you get to third year. It still just doesn't feel that way. Now I am just looking at like the final years and being like, wow, they're busy doing clinics. Like they've got their entire lives mapped out. Like they're gonna start working soon. They're gonna have their degrees. They'll be graduating. Like they must have everything sorted out. Yeah, I have a feeling that when I get there, I still won't feel like I have anything sorted out, <laughs> but we'll deal with that when we get there. Number four is that some stuff is boring. I always looked at vets and thought about vet school and I felt like there was so much to cover and so many interesting things to cover. I mean, you go to the vet with your pets and you know, there are all these different things that they do and it all seems so cool and interesting that I thought that it would be six straight years of just doing cool and interesting work. And don't get me wrong, there is a lot of cool work and there is a lot of interesting work and I love most of what we do, but there is boring stuff too. And the problem is that the boring stuff isn't any less important. So you still have to put the same amount of time in with so much more effort because it is so boring but you still do need to know it. So I was sort of disappointed, especially when I got to first year and it was not at all vet related. And there were a lot of things that I had to push through to get to the fun stuff. I feel like even second year, a lot of people expect second year to be so amazing and you're, you know, you're on the support now and you know, you seem to be knowing what you're doing and you're doing vet stuff. It really isn't, it's not by much. Also because we didn't do a lot of practicals but there is still a lot of boring stuff, a lot of nitty gritty details, and I feel like people who are ridiculously excited for the exciting parts get very demotivated by the boring stuff, but it is still necessary and it is the minority of stuff, so really just push through it and you will get to the better parts. Number five is one that I struggled with a lot in my second year specifically, and that is that you will doubt yourself and you will doubt your studies. I remember when I was in my first anatomy block, it was just before COVID hit. COVID, like literally universities were closed down three hours after our test for that week. I was really upset. I was, I mean, really, really upset that they couldn't have just closed it before that test. But it might have been for the better, but anyway. So it was the first day of my first anatomy block. I was, I think like a month into my second year and I was already behind with everything. And I was sort of like, you know, okay, so here comes anatomy. Everyone's told me that it's so difficult, but you know what? I can do this. That night I was sitting there in tears. I had gone through three breakdowns that one day I was sobbing to my boyfriend over the phone and I was just like, I can't do this. And I was just sitting there thinking that there is no way that I can do this. You know, I'm in second year and I can barely get through one day of anatomy. So if I can't do that, how am I supposed to do this degree, do this career? Because this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, especially anatomy. It's something that vets use every single day. I mean, it's the animal, you know, it's the body of the animal. It's not something that you just 
can sort of skip over, you know? So it's a fundamental part of vet science. And I was just like, if I can't even do one day of that, how am I supposed to do it for the rest of my life? And it was actually a very scary thing for me because I had always been completely committed to vet science. I've never doubted it. I've never doubted that I could do it. I knew that that was a thing that I was made to do. And one week, one day into anatomy and I wanted to quit. I just felt like there was absolutely no way that I could do this. And I actually made a really important decision right there and then because I got so scared of that feeling that I just decided that I will never doubt that again. I will never question vet science, I will never question myself, and I will never doubt that any of this is right for me. Because vet science is difficult enough that if you are not 100% sure, you will not be able to make it, okay? You need to be sure of this to be able to do this. And I was actually a lot calmer by the end of the week. For one, because I'd given up, <laughs> but also um, when we were standing around waiting for our test to begin and, you know, talking a bit about, you know, the virus that seems to be ending the world, then, um, you know, we were talking and the one girl was like, did any of you feel like just quitting, like not joking, but seriously quitting vet science because of this? And I was just like, wait, everyone else felt this way too? Because, like, my roommate, she was also stressed, but she wasn't at the point where I was. She wasn't contemplating quitting vet science, you know, even though she was struggling a lot. So I felt very alone in it. And you're so busy studying the whole week that you don't really get time to go to your friends and complain about it and ask what they feel like. Also, the rest of my friend group was very, very prestigious, so they would complain about it and still get 60s and 70s. I also failed that test, by the way, with, like half a mark. I failed with half a mark, guys. I was really upset, but it's fine. It's fine. I am completely over it. I'm fine. But anyway, um, so it was so nice to me to hear that other people felt that way as well, that it wasn't abnormal, that I wasn't, you know, that I wasn't good enough to do it. You know, it was nice to hear that other people felt it as well. So, just a heads up for you guys, you will feel that way, you will feel that way repeatedly, but it's okay. And other people feel that way too, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the way that you feel is the way that things are. Number six, also an anatomy related one, formalin is painful. No one told me this, no one warned me. Everyone told me how horrible anatomy was, but no one warned me about how horrible formalin is. For those of you who don't know formalin or formaldehyde, is the chemical in which cadavers are preserved so that they maintain their structure and stuff and don't decompose. So yeah, it's pretty strong and it gets in your eyes, not like it sprays, but the fumes get in your eyes and it goes in your mouth and your nose. And it was actually a lot better when we went back after COVID at it and we all had to be wearing our masks because then we didn't have to breathe in the formalin anymore. Also, a lot of people wore safety goggles and all kinds of stuff to try and get away from it, but you really can't. It just sort of gets you anyway. And also because they want to keep the cadavers from decomposing, the hole is pretty much closed up, you know, to keep like external, you know, contaminants and stuff from getting in. So it's really just this buildup of formalin in there and it burns your eyes and your mouth and makes you nauseous and it's really not ideal. But you do get over it. You, get, you do get used to it. It does get better. It's just a pain, literally. Number seven I have touched on, but it is the thing of everyone else is also struggling. And that is also one that I struggled a lot with, especially in first year, because my friend group was so prestigious and they really did well. They got like 60s and, well, no, they got set like 70s and 80s, you know, if not 90s for some things. And I was there like, hey, I passed, woo! And I sort of fit, felt like, you know, everyone else seems to be doing well because everyone else in my friend group really was doing well. And I just sort of missed on all the people who were really struggling. Like, I wasn't happy that anyone else was struggling. I wasn't happy that anyone had failed. But it was nice to know that I wasn't struggling on my own. Because it did often feel that way. So it is something to remember that you will often feel alone. Also, earlier this year, we were studying for a test, me and my roommate. And I would ask her questions and she would know everything. Just like that. Didn't have to look at the notes, nothing. And I was sitting there like... 
I, I don't even understand it when I have the notes in front of me. And it wasn't even a difficult test. And I just felt like I was the only one who was struggling. I mean, obviously she knows exactly what she's doing, but that is one other person. That is one person that knows what they're doing. I can promise you that there are hundreds of others who have no idea. So as sad as that is, it is very encouraging. <laughs> Number eight was one I was not prepared for, and that is that you will be grossed out. And um, yeah, I don't know, I was never grossed out by anything before, not pee, not poo, not blood, guts, nothing, like not even decomposing bodies. None of it grossed me out, nothing, not smells, not nothing. It, it, I was, and that was one of the reasons why I thought I could be a vid, because I wasn't grossed out by these things, and everyone around me was. So I was like, you know, I can obviously handle this, but oh my gosh. It was really, really horrible. I could not take it. We were in anatomy in our very last block and we had to dissect with a hind limb of a dog and we had to um, like dissect the muscles. So in order to do that, because you basically want to do it so that for one, you can easily see everything, but also that everyone else can easily see everything because you sort of help each other out, especially in anatomy week. So we were there and we had a very, very, very fat dog, like fat. And she was big, she was muscle. I mean, there are like two or three muscles that we found that literally were not supposed to exist. And we called the lecturers and they were like, yeah, that muscle's not really supposed to be there, but it's just a really muscular dog. So I don't know, she was just like ridiculously ripped, but she was also really, really fat. So we had to clean all of that off so that you could properly see the muscles, see where they were going, see where they attached and stuff. And now I'm sitting there and I'm pulling off this fat, pulling off this fat, which is not gross. It's actually really satisfying, especially if you get like a piece and you can like, like when you slice it off because it's just connective tissue, it sort of feels like you're pulling through spider webs. It's really satisfying and it all just comes off clean. But then there are these, because she was so fat, there's these little pieces that are just all over and it's attached to the muscle. So you can't just take it all off. It's not like a layer that you can take off. So we had to like pull away and clean up all these tiny little pieces. And then that grease from that fat starts running over your hands and your instruments and everything you touch is a slimy, greasy, and it's like this thick grease and it was like creamy. And then you put all this little fat that you pull off on this pile and the longer the pile is there, the hotter it gets. So the more grease starts to like run off it. And then you've got a little piece of fat stuck on your thing. So you have to like rub it in there to get it off and the grease just spreads and oh it was horrible i had to leave the hall several times because i was so grossed out by it luckily my friend was so understanding she was so chilled she's like you go i'll clean up and then afterwards when we had to throw that away and i had to like pick it up oh my gosh it was horrible i had never been grossed out by anything before okay not by live animals being cut open not by dead animals not by dead animals decomposing but that was gross only time, but still, it made up for all the other times that I was not grossed out by stuff. It was horrible. Number nine can be a bit of a sad one, and it was at one point pretty sad to me, and that is that the rest of your life goes on. And I feel like that should be included because it is something that a lot of people don't think about. A lot of people are not affected by it at all, but some people really miss out on a lot of their lives because they're so busy with med school. For one, you are so busy, busy with studies, you're constantly working, you constantly have something to do, you're so focused on it that you forget about everything else in your life. Also, it feels like your studies aren't going anywhere so often. I mean, I'm third year, and for a lot of people that's like, wow, you've made it to third year, that's like so far in. But for me, I still have three and a half years of studying. And I've already done two and a half, and I know what that two and a half has been like, and I have to repeat that and add some. So it sometimes feels like it just isn't moving. So you, you start to wish the time passed just because you want to feel like you're getting somewhere. And then all of a sudden that you, you realize that your little brother was 14 years old when you started. You know, he was a little guy. He was like baby to me. Okay, 14. That's like you're, ba you're barely there. Now he's 17. He's going to start driving soon. He's going to be going off to university himself. He's going to be moving out. And that is so far away from being 14 years old. And it is so weird to me because I feel like I've been so focused on vet school. And you're so focused on the fact that 
nothing seems to be going on. Your life doesn't seem to be going on because you're just still studying. I mean, three years have passed, but you're still doing the same thing that you miss everything else in your life changing. I mean, when I started studying, I was 18 years old. I'm almost 21. I'm old. A lot of people are laughing at this, but I feel old. I'm not a teenager anymore. Do you know how long I've been a teenager? And all of a sudden I'm not. And people expect me to be competent. So anyway, <laughs> that is something that a lot of people miss. And a lot of people are not affected by it at all. A lot of people live their lives and have vet science as a background. But for me, I had vet science and my life was in the background. So it was really weird to me when I woke up one day and I was like, oh, wow, I'm in third year of vet school. Like my little brother had grown up, you know, my puppy that I got when I was first year. She's almost two years old now. You know, everything is going on and you can so easily miss it when you're caught up in vet school. Number 10 is just a fast quick one to end with because I feel like the previous one got a little bit deep. So number 10 is that the lecture halls at Onderstepoort are freaking cold. Okay, you always dress for winter when you're going to campus because I can't go through five minutes in that hall without starting to shiver. It is horrible. So always take a jacket when you're going to campus, but I don't care if it is 35 degrees, 40 degrees outside, you take a jacket and long jeans into that lecture hall because it is cold. It is always cold. But anyway, guys, that was it for today's video. 10 things that I wish I knew when I started vet school and I just woke up Heidi again to say goodbye to you and she's very upset that I woke her up again. Watch it, my bo Here she is. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If there are any vet students that have anything to add, please let us know in the comments. If you guys have any questions, you can also just leave a comment. My email address is also linked in the description. And then you can also follow me on Instagram at vetlifeza. And then I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have an amazing day and that you stay warm. And I hope you guys enjoy your day. See you in the next one. Bye.